Oh, I'm live. I'm alive, too. <coughs> and very happily, I might add. I enjoy being alive. I'm having a nice time. Right now, I'm just putting things away. I'm tidying up. Willem had his... Um, why did it say it's low battery? He had, he had the top of his bed with that much peanut butter on it. And so I said, do you know how much that is? And so I, do you realize how small a tablespoon is? It's very small. At least it is in this one. Anyway, that's 100 calories right there. I've cut back on my peanut butter and I've lost more weight. I think I'm 165 something. Cool, I haven't been 165 except that time I was sick. I got sick and I got, I was 159. I'm still on my way down from 240. Good morning, Jillian. Yes, I am well today. I've just been having a nice time. Oh, want to see what I made with Desmond yesterday? I was taking care of him because it was a pee day. Let me turn this around. Look at this, I did something creative. We have this cool book and so, these are all made on the fold. And these, this is an interesting thing. You fold, you fold the paper and then you bend the parts upward. See, so you, you have it like that, right? But you bend them upward. Good morning, who is that? Who is that, what does it say? Hi, Daisy Debs. Anyway, see what we did? I just felt like, wow, I made paper dolls and for the first time in my whole life, I colored them. I made them into people. Wait a minute. See, I even have a gray hair one. Blonde and gray, and I guess that would be rust red hair, and that would be, no, this is brown hair, and this is red hair. Yay, it's really orange. And there's the backs of them, see? So their hair is the same color on both sides. Notice they all have curly hair. Isn't that right? Because they're actually all me. I suppose we all do that, right? They look good. My kids would love doing that. You just gave me an idea. Oh, it was so much fun. I found this book at the dump. <clears throat> this is fun. Okay, I'm glad you're here. Okay, I have a lot of, I have a lot of paper left on the floor. So, um, you know, let's turn on some more light. I can't really open the curtain because it's negative 20 out there. Well, it'll soon, soon it'll be warmer out there. Anyway, so look at, this is the book. Making things. And usually books are no good. Most books I read haven't got anything use usable. But this one, This one, okay, oh, paper making, we could have made paper, yes. We, making paper is fun. Okay, there's paper making on my videos. If you type in Nancy Today, paper making, on Google, you'll find it. Paper lace hangers, paper ornaments, Paper cutting, this is what we got into. And so, oh, and to hold the book open because the book always wanted to close. This is my little handy hack, Nancy's handy hack. Hold on. You're under my chin, I know it's kind of awkward for you there. Oh, okay. there we Yeah, yeah, that's what we were doing. We are just hanging out doing this while it was cold outside. See, so you cut them on the, on the other side. Now, I didn't staple them. But see, you could do this, too. You could make little things like that. Or hats. And then we didn't get to this paper sculpture, but... Um, 
this stuff. Wait a minute. Gotta scratch my ear. Oops. So you could make a stand-up village, right? You draw them on the paper and then you just cut the sides and they stand up. Hey, Desmond will like that. He's always cutting his people out. And this is the fold and cut. So look at that. You sit here, please. So whatever you 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 draw, you just cut do it on a fold. Folds at the top. It was really cool. Nancy, any paper? Oh yeah, I, I just took um I just took the I stole paper from William's printer. I'm losing a lot of paper lately. <coughs> Excuse me. So paper curls and mobiles. Wow. I'm done in felt and embroidered. Talk about a make work project. Oh my gosh. But it would be beautiful. And I mean, it's just like weaving a, a dish towel. I mean, that's a make work project, really. Totally. You can get a dish towel at the store for less than five bucks. Or you can unwind all the thread that you're going to need and, and make it into a cloth on the loom. Anyway, make work, make work things. Oh, look at this. They've got these inside that. See, we're changing the subject because I'm feeling a little bad because I said something that wasn't really, could be interpreted as unkind. So let's see. Tissue fish. Paper gliders. Sail forward, small loop in front. Oh, do you think they'll go? You use two paper clips, a plastic straw, and two strips of paper. And look. You put the small part into the straw. And then sail forward, small loop in front. That's smaller than that one. Okay. Oh, yeah, strips of paper, nine by one and six by one. If it doesn't fly beautiful, check proportions versus weight. So you might have to make it a bit smaller or a bit longer. Interesting, a glider. I, I was thinking, you know, I really have not mastered the art of paper airplanes. Have you? I mean, we can all make a paper airplane, sure, but can you make a really, really good one? I mean, you're going to make six or seven folds, right? Why not make them in the right direction? So that you have the most amazing glider that or airplane that you could have. Well, what do you have to do? Google it, right? They've had uh, when Lillian was working, I think they did a workshop. You know, these they send you to workshops when you work. I'm so glad I've never worked. I'm really blessed. And I kept doing. It. Thank you very much, Mrs. Um, I'm the Mrs. It's totally not me, is it? Anyway, yes, I'm the missus. Anyway, so so they went away to a, a workshop, and and um, it, and one of the exercises was to make paper airplanes. Do you remember how that went, Willem? Um, uh, very vaguely. That's all sort of all sort of a sort of a schedule, like old assembly line style schedule or something like that. And everybody had their own so you you made different airplanes one whatever after another. Well, whatever, whatever you wanted, I think. Oh, I see. It was uh, free. Whatever, yeah. I don't remember. Yeah. There, were, there were certain teams who competed, I guess. Mm hmm. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So let's see. What else have we got in here? Paper curls and mobiles. You know how to curl paper, right? You just you just lay scissors on it and you just pull, and then it'll curl. Paper gliders, paper spinners. Oh, this is interesting. Why does it have this thing on here? Where did I get that book? Wait a minute, let me get. Why has it got all this stuff there? There, okay. Oh, I'm glad you're having your coffee with me. And where did you get that book, Nancy? You think maybe Amazon? No, I got this book at the dump. Da-dum, da-dum. 
We have the best dump in the whole wide world. I don't know who owned it before me. We sure have bent it in our day of playing. It's by Anne, oh no, is that her name? Making Things, yes, by Anne Wiseman, Little Brown and Company. So Making Things, The Handbook of Creative Discovery by Anne Wiseman. Dum -da -dum. Let's see when it was copyright. Because those are fun things to know. So we first we have, this is very important to know if you're ever going to make a book. This is, you have the cover, which is thicker. And then you have a blank page. Then you have a page that says the name. And then you have a page that says it all. And then on the other side should be the copyright. Ooh, look how it's done. Copyright. 1973 by Ann Wiseman. Well, that's really cool. I wonder if I knew her. Uh, Library of Congress catalog. Isn't this pretty? Acknowledgements for permission to reprint previously copyrighted material approval appear on next page. This book is dedicated to the opposable thumb. Yay! That gives bonus avail that unique bonus available to man. Yes, indeed. Ooh, hey, Alaskan bow drill, seventy six. Oh, coat hanger bow drill, grass hats and mats. Wow, this gets into good stuff. Weed weaving. Wow, it just starts with 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 kindergarten. Paper faces, fingerprinting, roller printing. Chocolate pudding prints, <laughs> color charts, slotted animals, applique and stitchery, portable houses, box houses. Okay, let's go to 64 and see what we've got after that. Well, there's the printing, printing. Finger painting, crayons, slotted animals, applique. Okay, portable houses. Interesting, box houses. Could make a dollhouse. Pets, horse bench. Pete's horse bench. Box horse. Skate scooter, go-karts, stilts. Oh, wow. We used to have a pair of stilts when I was little. They are so much fun. I used to use them. That was that and the pogo stick. Those are my favorite things. And it's really easy. You use two by twos and a block of two by four to stand on, and you bolt that block in. Where is it? Yeah, there it is. You screw it in, I guess. Oh yes, tin can foot risers. Grandfather's willow whistle. Wow, I could make a willow whistle. I have willow. Pocket wonders, spinners. Remember doing a spinner? Cork copter. Oh, like a helicopter. Spinning top, clothespin butterfly. These are all hacks, right? Improvised emergency hammer. Hey, I made a... Oh, that's really cool. Could use a rock, you know? The little hacksaw blade. Ah, the little hacksaw blade. For a few pennies, everyone can own a hacksaw, a saw that really cuts. The teeth of the saw usually tilt downward away from the handle. This blade is available at every 510 or hardware store. Cut blade in half or snap in two. Wrap raw ends with tape for handle. And you will have two saws or one right angle rule. Put nut and bolt through holes screw tight. Since the cost of tools is often the reason that schools and homes have no workshops, the workshop for learning things in Watertown helps teachers figure out ways to adapt and improvise so everyone can have his own workshop. Watertown, is that Watertown, New York? 
Alaskan bow drill. This is cool. A green twig for bow. Uh, you know what? I've never successfully made a bow drill. You know, like, there's a lot of things that I think I know how to do, but I've never done. I think I should do them. I think they should all be on my bucket list. All right, so let's see. A Baskin bow drill. So we use a green twig for a bow, a stone or block of wood for a palm piece with indentation and to hold shaft. Oh, that must be this indentation here. No, is that it? A four by three quarters straight branch for shaft. Well, this is very interesting how they've got, they've used two different things. Why? A thong or gut string long enough to get bow, whole bow bent. Bit of flint or sharpened steel rod. Oh, that's what this is, steel rod. Oh, that's different, you see. Oh, now they've got one over. Let's finish this. Indent at center so thong loop won't slip. Drill hole for a drill bit. Tie thong to bend bow, bear down on palm piece, saw the bow back and forth, keep tension. Note, this is other material. Marvelous drills can be found in, aha, uh -huh, here's a book name. Drills from simple working models of historic machines by Audrey F. Bernstahl, Edward Arnold, London. Coat hanger bow drill. So that's to light a fire, right? You, you take, you make this, you put it on, put a little bit of fluff there, like you can use, um, you can use milkweed, or um, thistle, thistle um, seed pods, or um, wool, and you you just you do the bow drill for a while until you get a spark. Hey, good morning, Leanne. Nice to see you. Are you warming up? Are you just getting used to it? This is winter. It's It seems like a huge shock to have it go down to negative 20 Fahrenheit Celsius. That's zero Fahrenheit. Negative 30 Celsius. Like these are cold temperatures, but you get used to it, right? And if you live in a climate where you can be outside all summer, then it doesn't matter if you have to be inside for a bit in the winter. But if you want, if you have to be inside all summer because it's too hot, and then you get some cold stuff and you have to stay in all winter, that's no fun. This is kind of, this is kind of, um, um, it's something huge to wrap my head around that the, uh, that the ice has melted now enough that the vortex can't stay up there. The cold air that always circled the end of the air at the top of the planet now can't stay up there because it's too warm and so it slips. I don't know how it slips, but I guess it's got a wobble in it. But I think it's gonna be like, this is the way it is. Maybe not every year, hopefully we'll have our same, well, it is, it is, um, winters are getting warmer generally but um, they're also getting more intense but only the storms are more intense aren't they you know I, I haven't had a blizzard since 70 76 we had a blizzard that lasted three days in Kitchener Ontario and I don't know if they still have had blizzards since then we did have some down in Listowel when we were farming I was learning with my ex. But it hasn't, we haven't had blizzards up here near Ottawa. I mean, it's the coldest capital in the world, they say. But then they said the other day that we made a record because we were the coldest capital in the world that day. So, what does that mean? The, that Ottawa's not always the coldest capital in the world. Probably between them and Russia. Does China go up to the top too? No, China, what's not above China? Russia? Where's that big globe? Hold on, so much for the coat hanger bow drill stuff. Wait, but I want to see this book. Grass hats and mats, that's what I want to see. 
Grasses and weeds bound with sinew, strips of bark, or vine strings allowed man to make mats to protect him from the damp, cold earth, hats to cover his head from the sun, containers to carry things, and rock babies in. As if this was old-timey stuff, right? Because nobody was making it in the 70s, not much. Soles for the feet. If weeds and grasses are off-season, try anything that is flexible. Strips of newspaper, torn sheets, used paper towels, plastic bread wrappers, or rags. Bind them with raffia or string or twine. Thread a big-eyed needle. Add more grass to the underside, overlapping about two inches. Really? We never overlap like that. We always add a piece at a time. That's really gonna make for bumps. Oh yeah, I did macrame. Yeah, I wonder if it's in this book. Leaf skeletons. First, you need patience. Ha! Choose your favorite green leaf. This looks like the bugs ate it, doesn't it? Your favorite green leaf. On a folded towel or a sp carpet scrap, pound your leaf with a hairbrush. Oh my goodness, a poor leaf. With a hairbrush or scrub brush gently. Pound about five minutes until the center green part of the leaf is lacy and veins are exposed. Hi, meat sauce. I have no idea who you are. Have we known each other a long time? Just asking, meat sauce. Okay, so here we go. Um, we're learning about stuff we can do, making things. And it's all about like paper and vegetable printing and crayons. And then we get into applique and now we're in leaf skeletons. Yes, the last page was really good. It was about grass hats and mats. And you know what? I haven't told you this, but I have the trunk. I have told you. The trunk of my car is chuck full. You know what of? Well, when I harvested the willow, I didn't know where to put it, and I didn't want to leave it in the sun, so I stuck it in the trunk of my car. And it was about, it was a bundle, like a, an armful. You know, maybe like that big. And, um, and, and so it went across the back in the trunk, and then it curved. It's a Toyota Corolla, so that's the size of the trunk. And then, and then I, I harvested my my pine bark. Remember when I found pine bark? I was with the children. We were out driving the wilderness roads. I was trying to help them fall asleep, but they weren't falling asleep. And so we all got out and we stripped pine bark off these logs that were by the side of the road in, in the forest. Anyway, so we got some pine bark. And then we got some, another time we got some cedar bark. So I kept putting all these things in the trunk of my car and they're still in there. And then I, and willow bark, I peeled the willow. And then, look at that nice sunlight out there. Doesn't it look like it's a nice day? It looks like, you know, San Diego. By the beach. Except it's a hill. And there's a snowman in the way. Anyway, I'm going to turn you around so I don't have to hold you upside backwards. Then if you say something, I can see it. Let's see if you said anything. What's been happening here? Oh, wow, you have lots of stuff going on. I yes, I'm well today. Hi there, Daisy Debs. They look good. My kids would love doing that. You just gave me an idea. Aren't these great ideas? You'll be doing that with your grandchildren tomorrow. Maybe make paper mix snowflakes too. You know, and if you if you hang them by threads from a from coat hangers or just make any kind of circle or something, you hang them all by threads. And then you have a mobile. You can make origami paper little uh, little birds and stuff and hang them from threads. Okay, let's carry on. Carry on, carry on. Good crafting project. Yes, it was a speed day yesterday. Uh, Nancy, will any paper? Yes, I use I just use printer paper. You can do it with anything. And they would be nice with felt and embroidery. And that book I got from the dump. It's called Making Things by Ann Wiseman. Nice to have you with me, Leanne. And thanks. My hair is is getting longer, but you know what? When I brush it, 
when I get near the bottom it seems to be a little bit of tangles all the time so I think I'm gonna get the ends I got them trimmed off the other day I'm gonna get them trimmed off again I'd like it to be even because I'm brushing my hair every day now now that I found a brush I didn't always brush my hair I'd use my fingers anyway so and brushing your hair will split the ends I don't want to get all split ends um, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. It's supposed to be 40 Fahrenheit. Oh my gosh. Well, you're going to get sick. Be really careful because you go like that is a recipe for sick. I hope the freezing weather doesn't last for too long. Yes, it comes and goes, you know. Uh, I did do macrame and I think there may be in this book. Let's carry on. Look at that in a minute. And then meat sauce. Let's see. Just tuned in. Nice to see you again. Hey meat sauce, Justin Ule. You love the dump videos. Yeah, I try and make lots of dump videos. Will you ever be able to do an interview for a class of mine? Well, it depends on what your class is and who you are. I have to be careful, you know. Okay, so now we're look at the book again. Let's turn around. Oh, we've got to put some wood in the fire. Fire alert, wood needed. We Let's go in the front and see if they've got macrame in here. I know how to do macrame. Peaceable bread, bread sculpture, stained glass cookies, candle casting, candle dipping, salt pendulum, balance and gravity, past and paper clips. Well, you can read them. I think this grandfather's willow whistle would be fun. And the bow drills. The leaf skeleton, we didn't feed, finish looking at it. We're just checking for macrame. Ha ha, macrame, sailor's lace. Easy macrame, four string belt, macrame lace sample, macrame love pouch, Col college journalism. And I think if you're perfect for my job. My professor would definitely love you. Uh-huh. Well, that's a given. I mean, this is me. Anyway, so there's lots of macrame in here. So what are we looking at? Pages 100 to 100 and, oh look, there's a Neil Keel loom. Raya tufting, tufted shaggy vest, body covering, body logic clothes. This is what we need to take to Mira. We've lost all our ideas. Nobody has any more new ideas. Heddle, over and under weaving. What have they made? A paper plate loom, an oatmeal box loom, board and nail loom, a cardboard loom. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. This is a good idea for the children, you know, because they wouldn't it wouldn't get away. You know, it's pretty hard to do it. I know, isn't this a cool book? I couldn't believe it when I opened it to read it the other day. Anyway, this is pretty cool because if you if you leave you, you fold the paper and then you just make slices into the paper, right? And then you open it up, and so now the ends are 